that's no, Chief, that was Pat John, take one. Yeah. And so, I mean, I remember you before there, years ago. Ah, it must have been back around 2002 or three or something like that. Okay. And then you, you dropped out of it too, did you? I did. I was gone for 10 years, Paddy. It was that other stuff. And uh, I came back around 17, I think. Yeah, I remember seeing you in Roundwood probably in 16. You're only really a spectator. That's that all, yeah, yeah. But uh, when you came back, it was a bit different when you came back and you know the results there. They can see you with a lot of... You're winning a lot of opens and getting placed in them and all that in, in the four provinces and getting good at the results. How is it that you're able to just come back in you know, out the cold and suddenly start getting in the money? <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't all a bed of roses now, Paddy. Um, it, was, it wasn't always winning opens. Um, things was a bit different when, when I was at before, you know. <laughs> Why? What changed, Ian? Uh, I suppose I fell into the trap of thinking I know a lot more than I than I actually knew. Yeah. You know? And falling into excuses, you know. Every Sunday something would go wrong, you'd miss a gate or you'd you'd have a break at the pen or you'd be wrong at the bottom and it was always somebody's fault. Like <laughs> you mean like back years ago in your eyes? Yeah, when I was at before. You'd go to a trial and you'd be schooling at home and yeah, everything would be grand and you'd you'd go to the trial and your dog would pull short or something would go wrong and then on the way home you had a, you'd have yourself convinced by the time you got home that it was somebody else's fault. The yeah. judge was blind or the lads letting out the sheep stopped your dog or some old excuse, you know. And when I came back at it, like you needed you needed ninety point runs to get placed in an open to get let, placed. Let me stop you there. Everyone tells me the standard is a lot higher now than it was years ago. You were over for that gap. Did you find that when you came back? I found, Paddy, I think, what I think is, okay, the standard may be a little bit higher, but I think there's an awful lot of handlers capable of winning opens today. Back then, you could go to an open trial and there'd be six or ten handlers in at every trial in Ireland, and out of the ten handlers, the top six was going to come more Sundays. Now you go to an open trial and you just don't know. Yeah. I think the handlers, there's more hand, more better handlers. Do you know what I mean? Than there was that back then. Yeah. Well, but what, there's a lot, lot more dogs and a lot more, a lot more interest in it. Yeah. Well. So then tell us, how did it change? That it sounds like years ago it was easier to win opens. How did it change that? Well, I, I don't remember with you having magnificent results years ago. Oh, I, I hadn't magnificent <laughs> results years ago, Paddy. Um, I. Uh, like, I, I fell into the trap, like, of thinking I knew a lot more than I did. Yeah. Right. I look at it differently now. Um, like, I keep a different type of dog. And I'm more, uh, if it's not right, it's not right. Okay. If the dog isn't right, get a different dog. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay, we all like our dogs and all to that. But, like, you you can't. You're not going to do any good with a dog that you're making excuses for, just letting you down Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and you're blaming someone else. Mm. That's what happened to me. That's, I, that's probably the, the hole I fell into years ago, is I kept dogs because I liked them, not because they were good dogs. Yeah. Right, so therefore I wasn't getting, my results were mediocre, you know what I mean? I wasn't getting yeah. mentioned very much, you know, intermediate. But, like, it's all down to the dog, like. The dog has to be there to help you, and then I have uh, I listened a lot to top handlers, people that did know how to win, and I found out that I didn't know nearly as much as I thought I knew back then. Yeah, and that's, there's the thing that always interests me. I see lots of people now, if we're honest about it, like you see lots of people falling into that trap. You be careful, you don't fall into it. Where lads think that they know a bit more than they actually do know. And they don't know that they don't know. And so it sounds a bit like you were there. You told me that you won a nursery final years ago. And oh, I thought that, that uh, I've arrived like. Yeah. But, but even when I wasn't at dogs, uh, when I wasn't attending trials, I used to watch YouTube and I'd be watching and, and I used to watch the interviews and handlers came along then um, and the internet became more accessible out in the country. Like you, yeah. had, you had 3G and you had Wi-Fi. And I used to be sitting at night, and I, even though I wasn't actively competing, I still followed the dogs. And I listened to interviews 
and I watched the top handlers running their dogs and over a period of time it became <laughs> blatantly obvious to me that I was way off the mark with the dogs I was running. Yeah. Do you know? And something had to change. If I was going back at it, I said, I'm not falling into that trap again. Come on, that'll live here. That'll live. But here's the thing that always fascinates me, Eamon. Is so when you think, you know, how do you make the realisation that, wait there now, there's a little bit more to this there, and I might need to learn a bit more. Like, a, a lot of fellas, to get to a point, I find, and then the ears start to stop working on. How did you challenge what you thought you knew? How did you um, get to that point, like? What made well, you think well, about it? Well, I sat down and I looked at results in cold daylight, you know, and I stopped coming home from trials with an excuse. It was either my fault or the dog's fault. It wasn't the judge's fault and it wasn't the fellas letting out the sheep and it wasn't the put the cross drive gate in the wrong place, you know. It was somebody's fault. So the fault has to stand with you as a handler or the dog as your companion, your helper, right? And once you get brutal about that and you start to think differently results start happening for you then I find well the runs start coming you know what are you saying did you have to start to take the emotion out of it and the, I like my yeah. dog and never mind that and just be yeah, objective about it you can still about keep it. him for a pet but if you want to be trialling and you want to win open trials you get better dogs yeah. yeah do you think that standard of dogs is better this time than last time I don't think this necessarily the standard of dogs is better I think the standard of handling is better insofar as there's more there's more people capable of winning opens and there's there's new handlers coming in in Ireland all the time, good handlers like uh, Lance that's working cheap, every, like you're, you're, you're at cheap every day. Like invariably you're going to uh, learn a lot about cheap and dogs, you know, and I find a lot more younger lads coming in now and they're better, they're better handlers than I was when I came into it 25 years ago or 30 years ago, you know, 25 years ago, you know, and... You won, I won a nursery final, as Paddy said, and sure, I thought, this is great. Wheels are on the wagon, now off we go. But the dog I won, it was no good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she had one good day, mm. you know. I, I see people, like, you can think of one man, and he goes with a dog, and the dog has a bad run, and it makes mistakes, bad run, doesn't listen, something goes wrong every Sunday. Then once in a while, he'll put up a good run. Yeah. Right, so you keep the dog. Right, you're fooling yourself into thinking he's coming when, in actual fact, he just got damn lucky that day, and that's what happened to me when I won the yes the beginners class in the north. I just was pure luck. Yeah. But I convinced myself that I had a good dog, but I hadn't a good dog. Yeah. And the next twenty trials showed me that, but I was too <laughs> blind to see it. Like. Yeah, well, that's the bit that I find interesting is. Is is how you come to the realization where you tell yourself the truth and you get honest because you can't go up to the next level till you do, can you? Um, Paddy, you have to make a decision like, if you're if you're competing at anything, right? Do I want to compete or do I want to try and win? Yeah. Right. If you're happy to just compete, your dog that you like really well, you probably do. Yeah. You get around more Sundays and you go home happy. If you want to win, right, you have to have the right animal and you have to. Get the in, yourself into the right frame of mind. Like I go schooling with different people, and I, I put my dogs in different scenarios, and they get a lot of work now towards what they did back then. A lot of normal work, and I think that helps. When I'm out training with you or Adam or someone, and I'm watching, and I and sometimes you say, "No, look at that," you know. And if you keep your mind open, yes, every day you will learn something new. Well, we all say, oh, God, I'm real open-minded now. But how, can you suggest to somebody, you know, how do you keep your mind open? Like, you, you, Well, some people will. Yeah. You know, some people, some very good handlers, they're always watching. Yeah. And they don't think they know everything. Yeah. Because anyone, that if you think you know everything, you're in for a big shock. Yeah. Because every day you whistle a dog, you learn something new. Yes. It's the same as any sport. Yes. But if you can't, if you can't keep your mind open about your own capabilities, where you're making the mistakes, and your dog's shortcomings, you're going nowhere. Yeah. So if your dog has shortcomings, like if every Sunday you go out and he could stop a little bit short and he's catching you there, or maybe he's a bit weak on yeah. the shedding, or, uh, you know, he's, he's a little bit slack going there, there's not enough out firing or whatever, 
you, you sort of have two choices, either change that or change the dog. It depends on your, your aspirations. Oh Amanda. yes, of course. If, if, if you you're happy to enough to go every Sunday and just have a nice run and come home and bring the dog in and put him up on the sofa and watch telly and tell him he's a great dog, that'll do. You know, yeah. if you want to win, it's a different ball game, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to, you have to get brutal. You know, if the dog's not right, the dog's not right. Yes. And the dog is a huge part of it. There's only you and the dog can be, that's going to be at fault any <laughs> any given Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know what you mean. There's a bit of luck, but ultimately it's coming. Ultimately, down it's you and you and it's down to you and your dog. Yeah. So if the dog is right and you're wrong, you need to sharpen up. If you're right and the dog is wrong, you need a different dog. Yeah. Like it's like going out and trying to make a tenon joint right with a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not happening for you. And that's just the way it is. The dog the dog is, is your tool. And what would you say to people now that might be telling themselves excuses and they're not really aware of it and all? How would you catch yourself telling excuses? I know it seems obvious, but what people are say, doing it all the time. What would I say to those people? Keep telling yourself the excuses to leave it easier for the rest of us. <laughs> I'd say you need to you need to assess. You need to sit down and see where you want to be. Yeah. We can't all be Kevin Evans's and Ricky's and but you aspire to the best you can be. Yes. Right? But you can watch videos and think for them. Yeah. That's the problem. But the, the trouble is people, a dog at home that can do yeah. that. <laughs> A home is a home means nothing. We go schooling, and the only run that's any good to you is your first run. Yeah. Because that's what you get at the trial. You get one run. Yeah. So when you're out for three quarters of an hour or half an hour, and you've done it again and again and again, and eventually the dog gets it right. Okay, when the sheep are tired and he's tired, that's no good. Yeah. Your first run is yeah. the one you want to be thinking about. And so anyway, uh, as for excuses, you can tell yourself excuses, Adam, if you like, but we'll tell you the truth. <laughs> oh, no, <all laughs> we too won't well. tell you. <laughs> you, you don't need to, your feelings need to be fairly tough around here. You yeah. get told the brutal truth very quick. <laughs> no, Whether you're Adam or Emin or Paddy, <laughs> right? That'll do. That'll do.